Hi everyone, I'm Anne and today I show you how to make some backdrops to use in photography. I used the backings of some big old photo frames I had laying around. It's quite sturdy and it has a smooth finish. You don't need a lot of material or experience in painting. The things you need for this are newspapers or something to protect your workspace, gloss if you don't want to get paint on your hands, water and some kitchen towels, sandpaper to prep the surface, stirring sticks to stir the paint, paint with a matte finish, that's really important that it's a matte finish, plates or containers to hold the paint, brushes, sponges, rollers or something to apply the paint, and of course a surface to paint on like a canvas or plywood. Some people like to give the backdrop some 3D texture first, with wall filler or some kind of paste, but today we're only using paint. If the surface have damages on it, like indents or scratches, it probably will show through if you only use paint. So unless that's the look you're going for, you want to choose a smooth surface like canvas, MDF or plywood. I prepped my workspace with newspapers to protect it and then I lightly sanded the surface of the board with a fine grit sandpaper to give the paint a grip to hold on. What colors you use depends on what look you're going for. It's a good idea to search for some inspiration online or think about what you want to do with it. Just experiment, there's no right or wrong. To reduce the reflection of light, it's a good idea to use paint with a matte finish. It can be wall paint, spray paint, it doesn't matter as long as it has a matte finish. I want them nice and dark, so I gave all four backdrops two layers of black chalk paint with a roller to make sure I had a nice dark base to work from. When all the boards were covered, I've put the paint aside in a plastic bag so it wouldn't dry out completely in case I want to use it later on. I will show you some examples of photos I took with these backdrops, so stay tuned until the end of this video. This is my first time doing this. I had an idea in mind of what I wanted to make, but I didn't know how to do it exactly. So here you can see me experimenting on a scrap piece of wood with two colors of paint, some brush strokes and two different sponges to see what it would do. I didn't like how the two colors looked together, so I decided to go in with one single accent color. I wanted to give the boards a bit of a clouded look. I did some of the brown paint with a little bit of black in a container and dipped the sponge in it, so I had basically two colors on the sponge at once. This was a very messy process. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, you need gloves, but I did it without. I tapped the sponge onto the board with varying the pressure. But I don't want it to create a repeating pattern, so I turned the sponge regularly to break up the texture. The textured sponge I used worked great on a small scrap piece of wood, but on the bigger board it was creating a pattern that was a bit too small and textured for my liking, so I changed it to a regular kitchen sponge. That worked way better for the look I was going for. Besides stabbing, I try to lightly twist the sponge onto the surface for some variation. Sometimes I dip the sponge quickly in some water to react with the paint. I use the hair dryer to dry the paint in between layers, because sometimes it's a bit hard to see how it looks if the sun is creating some reflections in a wet paint. But you can easily let it dry with some patience instead of a hair dryer. I used the same technique on a blue and a green backdrop. Here you can see from up close what I did. Of course you don't have to do the same thing as I did, just experiment. It always turns out different anyway, each time you do it. It's a relatively cheap way to get some beautiful unique backdrops for photography that no one else has. I'm incredibly stubborn. I didn't like how the green and the brown color looked together on the practice piece, 
but I tried it anyway. I thought, maybe I have to see it when it's finished. But guess what, I also didn't like it the second time. I gave it some time so I get used to the look, but I decided to experiment some more and introduced a different color on top, together with some of the black paint that I had left. Then I saw some of the previous colors shining through. I tried to bring some of those colors back here and there, because I covered up most of it. After that, I left it aside for a while to think about what I wanted to do with it. Worst case scenario, I can completely start over by giving it another layer of black. I just didn't want to give up on it. Although I wasn't sure about this one, in the end, against all odds, it turned out to be the most useful background of them all in my upcoming photo project. So please bear with me. The next day, I tried something else. I grabbed the tray and the roller again that I used to give the boards that first base layer of black. It was empty, but the roller still had some paint on it, so I basically dry brushed the board again with the roller. I varied the pressure. I let the weight on the roller itself do the trick, sometimes I pushed a little harder. After that, I still wasn't sure, so I again experimented by adding more paint. This time the same beige color, but with some additional white. And I liked that way more, but it was very light and I wanted a dark and moody background. Here and there I still saw some of the previous colors underneath, so before I covered everything with beige and white, I went over again with that semi-dry roller of black, and I kept working on it by going back and forth between the different colors of paint, until I was happy with how it looked. That happens sometimes, but if you're not giving up on it, you might end up with something unique that you didn't expect. I used all four backdrops in my next photo project, and this one, in the end, was exactly what I needed for that. I'll upload the video on that project next time, but here's a sneak peek of some of those photos I made with these backdrops. Are you going to try this yourself? Which backdrop did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day, until next time.